Today, uh, we will be looking at one disorder that usually comes in pediatrics, which is hereditary interference of fructose. Now, some of you might ask me, what is the clinical importance of this? Now, uh, if you can remember, usually once a baby is born, we, uh, we are completely keeping the baby on breastfeeding for the first six months. First six months is completely dependent on breastfeeding. However, after the six months, we start complementary feeding. With the complementary feedings, uh, there might be different uh, uh, criteria or there are, there are different reasons that uh, this might occur. But sometimes some babies might show growth faltering. The growth does not retain. It's not sufficient. So one incidence where you see growth faltering would be due to this genetic disorder which is hereditary interference of fructose why is that because now after six months we are starting on food that consists of sucrose let's assume there's potato there's um, let's assume that the, ba the baby is given potato there's ample amount of sucrose in it or any other sort of a vegetable or fruit that is given consists of sucrose sucrose which is a disaccharide consisting of both glucose and fructose. So once you start fructose, since this baby cannot handle that much of fructose, what would happen is that there is a growth fault. So this is the clinical relevance of hereditary intolerance of fructose. The, this becomes significant after six months once complementary feeding initiates. So that's number one. Now, if you, if you ask me about some uh, data, some facts about this particular disease, yes, this is a recessive genetic disorder, recessive disorder, uh, which is not quite from, which sometimes even rare. This happens because of a deficiency of a disease, a deficiency of an enzyme, which is called aldolase B. Now, of course, if you know your biochemistry, well, then there are three types of aldolase aldolase a b or c a b and c all together are important in glycolysis where you convert fructose 1 6 biphosphate to dihydroxyacetate acetone phosphate with glyceraldehyde now this can be can, done by any of the following Either it's A, B, or C. However, when it comes to fructose one six phosphate, fructose one phosphate, this can be converted to DHAP OGA only by aldolase B. Right. So I hope. Now you would ask me, what's the significance of fructose one phosphate? Here's the clue. Now, once you eat a uh, significant amount of food that consists of fructose, what will happen is that it will be directed in this pathway where fructose is phosphorylated to form fructose 1-phosphate. Now, once this starts to form, there should be aldolase B to break it down so that it can be driven in a path where ATP could be generated. However, in this circumstance where there's this deficiency of the particular enzyme, what would happen is that all the fructose will accumulate as fructose one phosphate. Then, now you would See them. This is not going according to the order that we already know. It's, there's something problematic with this. Now, what would happen is that once this starts accumulating, all the phosphates, all the phosphates will be accumulated in this molecule. Fructose one phosphate consists of the phosphate molecule. Therefore, the phosphate is not the inorganic phosphate is not readily available for other nucleotide production. So what will happen? Inorganic phosphates levels usually 
goes down. Why? Because it is trapped in fructose 1-phosphate. The problem with this is that, now, if you see, uh, there are many other pro uh, there are many other problems as well but once this starts to happen atp try to compensate the phosphate levels how does it do that atp breaks to form amp by releasing phosphates by some or the other it tries to compensate now amp this is not uh, enough or sufficient to do uh, to bring back the phosphate levels, but it tries to do so. The AMP levels now goes high. So what will happen? AMP to ATP ratio increases. The body senses that there is a higher amount of a nucleotide, the AMP, which is not quite typical. It is not the currency form that we usually deal with when it comes to energy. So what? The body does is that it breaks down this uh, nucleotide to uric acid. That's something quite that we usually see. Most of the purines are broken down by the body itself. There are multiple enzymes which are involved, xanthine, xanthine oxidase. I'm not going to say about it, but it's just that AMP is broken down. So the uric acid level goes up which leads to hyperuricemia. Now everybody knows once the uric acid levels in the blood increases, it starts getting deposited in joints. What happens? This clinical scenario, this clinical condition is called gout. You start getting uric acid deposited within the uh, within the especially uh, the most susceptible one would be the metatarsal joints metatarsopharyngeal joints so however it starts getting deposited within the joints causing inflammation leading to gout apart from that now i said that phosphate levels are low ATP levels are also going to go down. Once this happens, now there is a certain amount of energy that is required by a cell to make sure that uh, the transition of electrolytes between cells is maintained because now we are dealing with, if, if, the, if it's a cell membrane that we are considering, there are multiple now, if this is a cell, there are multiple protein molecules that are involved in active transport of electrons. Now, once this gets disrupted due, due to the absence of ATP or the energy, what would happen is that magnesium that is already within the cell starts flowing out which leads to hypermagnesemia. So this is why we are, now, if you do a electrolyte testing in this particular individual, if you suspect, now let's assume that there is a baby who is brought in, there is growth faltering, and you do electrolytes. Once you do electrolytes, you would see hypermagnesemia. Hypermagnesemia, I write it like this, hypermagnesemia in this particular individual who is supposed to have hereditary intolerance of fructose. I hope you got it. Right. So now I described three phosphate levels are going to be low, uric acid levels are going to be high, and also they are going to there is going to be hypermagnesemia. So these are few disturbances in electrolytes that you would see. What else? Now, apart from this, now you would also see few other correlations with this. One thing would be
since fructose it is not metabolized fructose is not metabolized because it cannot proceed what would happen is that this fructose starts going out via urine because now blood level of the fructose fructose blood level fructose blood level is elevated because it is not metabolized fructose blood level is going to be high therefore it's there is going to be a large quantity of fructose that is ultra filtrated into the filtrate of the nephrons which will not be adequately reabsorbed hence what would happen is that there is going to be some amount of fructose in the urine now you would be able to identify this um, so therefore once you start finding non-reducing sugars non-reducing sugars because fructose itself is a not uh, it's a not a reducing sugar non-reducing sugars in urine this is evident of the possibility of fructose urea which is a component in HIT. apart from this what are the other possibilities now this fructose once it starts forming it forms certain chem if now since the fructose level is going to be high very much high it starts to produce other sorts of chemicals since the fructose level is high it starts producing other sorts of chemicals which are toxic now since it cannot pass through the normal metabolic pathway it's going to be redirected in other pathways to produce toxic chemicals these toxic chemicals gets either accumulated in the kidney in the nephrons or in the liver this will have a cytological disruption on the metabolism as well as uh, the functions of the cell leading to cellular toxicity cellular fructose toxicity which can ultimately cause either cirrhosis which is chronic liver cell disease or else sometimes it can lead to renal tubular dysfunctions why is that because this the fructose urea that passes through uh, the urine which is not reabsorbed well what would happen it will disrupt or destroy the cells that are already present in the tubules in the nephrons i hope you can remember as this pass up it will disrupt the tubular cells causing renal tubular necrosis if this happens what would what is the ultimate disaster that we are looking at once the tubular cells are destroyed it will not be able to reabsorb the material in the urine back to the bloodstream which are required so amino acids glucose and even certain other chemicals will not be reabsorbed which would which would lead to amino acid urea because it is not reabsorbed it passes out through the urine out into the external environment so amino acid urea and glucose or urea would be seen now there are also a reducing sugar now coming up so both of these uh, will be seen in the urine and sometimes even phosphate urea phosphates are also not reabsorbed well. so these are this is a detrimental condition right now how can you uh, now the problem is already there the diagnosis is simple uh, so what are the things that you can do in order to prevent another thing that i would have to say is the clinical symptoms 
I have to explain the clinical symptoms. Uh, I almost forgot uh, to bring up the symptoms. Now the symptoms of HIF. Rather than just giving out a list, I would like to bring the symptoms out by means of explanation. Symptoms of HIF include, now as far as I know, what would happen is that once because of deficiency of aldol SB, fructose one phosphates gets accumulated. Now this acts as an inhibitor, acts as an inhibitor to glycogen phosphorylase. Phosphorylase. Right. Once this happens, what would happen is that glycogen will no longer be broken down to form glucose because it's disrupted. Hence, the glucose level is pretty much less. But this does not give rise to a significant hypoglycemia. Such, I, uh, there are not much of clinical evidences where people present or babies present with hypoglycemia. However, the glucose level, the glucose levels are slightly reduced, not very significant hypoglycemia. However, what would happen is that the hypoglyce or, or more or less a little bit of a low amount of glucose in the blood will trigger few symptoms and it will lead to the formation of lactate the lactate leads to lactic acidosis this is the main culprit of most of the symptoms the lactic acidosis causes nervous instability leading to seizures. The lactic acidosis again can cause tachycardia and tachypnea. What is tachypnea? Increased respiratory rate. It's something very prominent. And sometimes even tremors. Now, these might be that is, there's another condition that you almost forgot. The fructose urea will lead to renal damage or proximal renal tubular necrosis, which can cause Fanconi syndrome. As I said, Fanconi syndrome is nothing but the loss of amino acids via urine. The loss of bicarbonate, the loss of phosphate. Now, this is uh, the, these materials are taken out through urine, and uh, which again the the, design, the the dysfunction of the proximal tubules again will reduce H plus excretion as well. So what would happen is that all of these again gives uh, this lead to acidosis and this also disrupts the homeostasis. So most of these gives rise to these particular symptoms that you see. Now, this is bit the so as far as I know and also because of the lactic acidosis and everything, the growth will be faltered. Growth faltering happens. Sometimes even the children might present with failure to try. What is failure to try? Failure to try means in the uh, growth chart, you would see uh, usually crossing of two major percentiles or sustainably the weight is less than that of the third percentile or the weight for the height is less than that of the fifth percentile. So this is something that you would see. These are some and sometimes as uh, as I said, uh, babies might uh, come up with CSCD, cirrhotic form of liver, with uh, decompensated uh, features and sometimes even hepatomegaly.
So these are few symptoms that you would see. Apart from this, now you would ask how would I be able to diagnostically identify this. Diagnosis is something to do with, as I said earlier, the presence of non-reducing sugars in urine. There's something called Kleine test, which is not very uh, important, but know that you can identify the presence of fructose in urine and then come to the conclusion. You can distinctly identify between glucose and sucrose. If not, there is something called fructose tolerance test. Fructose tolerance test where you ask the patient to administer or get in consume some amount of fructose which will uh, which we, where we can be able to identify uh, the consequences. However, the problem with this is fructose tolerance test is a bit hazardous if done for a pediatric patient. Therefore, this is not quite uh, well. The clinicians would not be very happy to do this. Hence, uh, clean test would be something much more easier. How's the diag treatment? So, we come to the last portion of this uh, lesson. How is the treatment? Treatment is avoiding fructose containing material fructose containing meals you can now of course this is very hard in a in a situation where where complementary feeding to be started to a baby but uh, uh, you can substitute it in certain other material soy formulas some uh, there are many many uh, 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 meal substitutes that you can use. Uh, in fact, if you have to do this, you have to get an advice from either a dietitian or a consultant, nutrition physician. So uh, anyway, uh, this uh, this problem might be mitigated with dietary safe dietary practices. So that's this is why we uh, now the next in the next lesson I would be looking at failure to try, but this is why. Uh, we uh, would recommend to do uh, to get a good uh, dietary history during your clinical history taking in order to make sure why uh, in order to make sure as well as identify some causes and criteria which will lead to the particular cause where the where there is growth for true. So this is it. So this is what we usually uh, see in uh, hereditary intolerance of fructose. This is not quite common, but again uh, a, a place where it is where uh, professors in biochemistry are quite fond of asking because it's, it has this good clinical relevance